Hello, good day everyone. So today we're going to discuss about the one of the models of the application of differential equation. And so there are lots of models in the application of differential equations, but we only choose one, and it is the falling bodies and air resistance. To begin this topic. Let us first define what is falling bodies and air resistance. So, falling bodies is an object or any object that is moving downward with the help of gravity and its mass, while air resistance is said to be the force that acts on the opposite direction of an object. So, falling bodies, we have a movement downward in downward direction so the air resistance acts in upward direction so next is <clears throat> before the experiment of Galileo Galilei in the Tower of Pisa it is generally believed that heavier objects has greater acceleration than lighter objects he examined <clears throat> this mo the movement of two objects which are the cannonball and the, the feather and then he releases the two objects from the top of the tower and that's how the experiment goes and uh, as you can see the cannonball reaches the bottom or the ground first before the feather um, it is generally believed as, as I said earlier that heavier objects has greater acceleration than lighter objects but <clears throat> the result is the cannonball reaches the bottom first it's not because on its weight it's not because that the cannonball is heavier than the feather it is because on the air resistance the difference is rates is due to air resistance the two objects has uh, the um, same acceleration but but the air resistance acts on two objects that's why the feather takes or took long time to reach the ground first and that's the reason why the cannonball reaches the ground first and the uh, falling bodies also stated that as move as the object moves downward it gains speed and um, the faster the movement of an object the increase in the air resistance so eventually the eventually the air resistance is enough to balance to balance the gravity so that's that is the reason why the cannonball reaches the ground first before the feather it's not because on the weight of the two object but rather it is because on the air resistance so next is we have here again the cannonball <coughs> it uh, moving downward with the help of the gravity and the air resistance so the movement of an object which is downward so we consider the downward direction as the positive so positive direction the the movement of an object downward while the air resistance is negative because it acts on the opposite on the other side or opposite side of the of the object which is moving downward we consider the positive direction or the downward direction as positive because we only focus on the movement of an object which is downward direction so now to compute the net force of the object we will have the force 1 plus force 2 the two forces that acts that acts on the object which are the air resistance and the gravity so the force 1 is equal to mass times gravity and the force 2 is equal to negative kv it is negative because as i said earlier it acts on the opposite side of the uh, opposite direction of the movement of our object 
So, negative KB or K is the constant proportionality. It is also called as viscous damping. So, by changing the equation, we will now have net force is equal to mass times gravity. Our force 1 here will be replaced here minus the force 2 will be replaced by negative KB. That's why it became negative KB. So, next is applying the Newton's second law of motion. We all know that the equation in Newton's second law of motion is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, getting the derivative of acceleration, we will now have the dv dt or derivative of velocity with respect to time. So, the equation will now become force is equal to mass and then the acceleration here will be replaced by dv dt here. So, we will now have mass times dv dt. So, now our first order differential equation will become by replacing the net force here by mass times dv dt, we will now have mass times dv dt equals to mass times gravity minus kb. That's our first order differential equation. So now the st or the distance, so getting the derivative again of the v or velocity to get the distance so we will now have ds over dt or derivative of this distance with respect to time then the earlier the acceleration derivative of acceleration is equal to dv dt and then getting the derivative again of dv dt we will now have d squared s because getting the derivative of velocity we will have a distance so d squared d squared s over dt squared. So now our second order differential equation by replacing the the original equation which is mass i mass um force rather is equal to mass times a gravity minus kv by replacing this the force of mass times acceleration and then the mass with d squared s over dt squared and then the velocity of d squared d s over dt or we'll now have by changing um, by replacing or transposing the the negative k d s dt here to the left side of the equation we will now have mass times d squared s over dt squared plus k because we transpose this one to the left side of the equation that's why it become positive now positive time i plus k ds over dt is equal to mass times gravity and then recalling back our first order differential equation is mass times tv dt mass equals to mass times gravity minus kv <clears throat> so applying the the um, how to get the mathematical <clears throat> how to get the equation of the of the falling bodies in a word problem so let us try this one so for high speed motion through the air such as skydiver shown Falling before the parachute is opened, air resistance is closer to a power of instantaneous velocity, Vt. Determine a differential equation for the velocity, Vt, of falling body of mass m if air resistance is proportional to the square of the instantaneous velocity. So, let's try to get the the problem is asking for the differential equation. So, let's try to find the differential equation of the problem. So, our net force is equal to force 1 plus force 2. Our force 2 is k is equal to k 
v squared and our first one is mass times gravity so by replacing again this one these two forces by this so we will now have net force is equal to mass times gravity minus kb squared and then applying the newton's second law of motion which is the equation is force is equal to mass times acceleration we will now have mass times acceleration is equal to mass times gravity minus kb squared we just replace the f or the force here by mass times acceleration that's why it became like this and then getting the derivative again of a as we did earlier getting the derivative of a is now become dv dt and now we will have the equation of mass mass times dv dt is equal to mass times gravity minus kv squared this is now the equation that we're going to use to solve this problem so the problem doesn't have a given a per, um, particular given in the in this problem we don't have a number or given uh, given number as exact value on which or what uh, exactly the velocity the mass so we only determine the the equation on the problem so this is the equation if we have the value on each on each um, given so we will we can exactly we can answer or we can get the exact value of this equation so let's just end this here because it only asks for the for the equation of the problem so that's how you can get the equation of any world problem with regards to falling bodies you just determine the um, the velocity the given and then and then applying this one the getting the derivative and then just replacing the the equation and you can arrive to this um, equation the the needed equation to solve the problem or the word problem so that's how you can get so I think that's all so thank you and God bless